What's going on guys? Welcome back to RC Every Day. Another Tamiya time. Got another new TA01. So uh, this one, I, mixed feelings on it. You know, I always talk about the price. Uh, this one, the very hidden in the pictures about the body. Chassis is great. It's got some vintage electronics. I'll show you here in a minute. But um, this body, it's not beat up. It's just a sticker nightmare. So uh, this is 58108. First available in June 23rd, 92. Last available date, 94. I use Tamiya Base. They have an awesome database of all Tamiya kits, and it is very handy information. Has uh, links to manuals and things as well. It's a pretty uh, helpful website when you're doing all this vintage stuff. So this one I didn't know a whole lot about. This was from before I got into the hobby, just barely, a couple years. Um, this is a Mercedes, <laughs> it's AMG, I think it's a 190E AMG something. It's a neat car. These were awesome in real life. They had this awesome wide body kit on them. This thing is a nightmare with the stickers. So I think it says Koenig Pilsner, maybe? I'm not familiar with uh, this car whenever it raced or anything like that. But I've always wanted one of the AMG bodies. And they have this nice hard plastic grill um, with the Mercedes emblem that this one is missing. And uh, luckily, Tamiya has re-released this body lately with a couple different liveries. But, yeah, this one, I'm, I'm, it's mixed feelings about. It's a nice example, but the stickers are terrible. So, if you ever put one of these together, these uh, Tamiya stickers come in big sheets. And the more involved it is, the bigger the sheet, unless you want to take your time and cut every one of these lines out. And whoever assembled this one did not do that. And then you've got stickers on stickers, and then you've got some wear and damage, and then you got the time factor, and it's peeling up a lot of places. There's dirt underneath the stickers. It wasn't trimmed properly around like the door handles and things. So it's, a, it's kind of a mess. It looks good from 20 feet, but up close, it's missing a few things, and it's, it's pretty rough. So out front again, I mentioned it's got a hard plastic chrome Mercedes grill. It's supposed to have the little whatever they call their emblem, <laughs> little triangle thing sticking up on there. Somebody did a decent job of painting in the black uh, mesh. No headlight stickers, but they did leave the headlights clear. So I don't know. This, these were way back, these predate slight buckets. So I don't know if there's a modern option for that on the newer versions of it. I'm not even sure this body's worth fixing up. It, it would be a good runner, but the chassis is too nice to run. It looks pretty good. There's a little bit close up, closer up look. You can see it's just a mess of sticker on sticker. And yeah, looks like somebody came back up over time and tried to cut them, but they're brittle and it ripped in a few spots. And it's just an all around mess. <laughs> so you can see where it's bubbled up on both sides of the pillar there on the back door. It's got some scrapes and stuff in it, which the whole body's covered in the sticker basically. Outback doesn't look as bad. I'm sure we're missing some stickers on the back. They wouldn't leave a touring car rear end unstickered in real life. We do have the original massive wing on there. It's in pretty good shape. It's got a few little bumps and bruises, but not too bad. It's better shape than the rest of the body, really. Uh, we're missing our mirror inserts. Just a couple little little things here and there. It does have the correct wheel for this. Um, I don't have a clue what part number that is or nothing, but. That's available on to be a base if you're interested. So I uh, unboxed it. It wasn't packaged very protected. Luckily, the box was not damaged. My, I don't know if it's the Dallas Post Office Hub or what, but they have a tendency to crush boxes. So this one had just a one layer of bubble wrap, and it was it. Filled the box up exactly. So luckily, we didn't get any any major <laughs> crushing going on. But I, this one would cost me a little bit more. I think this one with shipping and tax, it was like two seventy, and I. I don't know. There was other people bidding on it. These are getting more popular, and this one being as old as it is. Um, this was one of the first of the touring cars in the TA01 platform. So it's, I guess there's more demand for that. I had a few active bidders, so I had to compete a little bit for it. But the chassis is where it's all at, so let's take a look underneath there. So I'm going to tell myself this is where I spent the money at. This is a TA01, light gray with the honeycomb. Um, different style than TA02. The TA02s again are shorter, has the same gearboxes, but the front arm configuration on, you can use this configuration on the O2 to fit the shorter bodies like the Porsche, the short wide. 
and all that kind of stuff. The TA-01s were longer in the middle and had the short configuration to fit the long bodies. And I don't know, that seems like to me that's really the only logical reason why they made the change to the O2 was so they could have a variety of bodies that would work with an adjustable wheelbase. This one you could adjust it, but there's not much longer than this setup. Tires are not, I don't know, they're not hard, but they're not soft. Looks like they've been uh, resurfaced, honestly. They have a texture on them. I don't know if that was somebody's custom uh, race mod they did. Um, the big thing that under here, we got a Novik Explorer 2. I was a big Novik fan back in the day. I had the rooster on everything. <laughs> the rooster with the reverse and all that on. I pretty much had one rooster ESC and I moved it to all my rigs because I couldn't afford it anymore. Um, we have a Trinity spec tuned or something motor orange can. Um, I don't know a whole lot about the motors and stuff because I didn't get actually get to race back in the day, but I do know what that is because I've seen them around. I don't know if it's super valuable or anything like that. Looks like the servo is a Futaba SC3 or S3003. Sounds like it's in pretty good shape. Not a whole lot of crunchiness to it. Um, other than that, it's got the usual suspects. It looks like the uh, front is pretty good. I think also the front shock mount is different on the O1s to the O2s. It doesn't have as much support between them. The rear one you can see is cracked on the body mounts. This one's cracked on the shock mount. You flip it around. Uh, cracked on the shock mount here. Front one is good. It's a little bit different setup. I, that's honestly the first time I've really noticed that. I need to check my other O1s. Looking at one over there and it does not have that same cross member or same body mount support. But all in all, I think that's a pretty good deal. Novik stuff, since they went out of business, it's kind of gotten collectible. I've been kind of nostalgic about it. I've been, you know, just not looking hard, but keeping an eye out for a functional rooster ESC just for old time's sake. But uh, I sold mine for maybe 10 years ago because I was like, I'll never use it. It's too antiquated. And now here I am collecting this stuff. Underside is pretty good looking. Looks like the arms and stuff look basically new. The chassis's got some light scratching, but it doesn't look like from driving. It's got lines and stuff, maybe storage marks. It has an A sticker. I don't know what that is. I've gotten a couple. I don't know if it was like, uh, I'm thinking like Carnival. You go to a fair or something and they have a, one of those little things where you drive RC cars around. And you do it like a big giant wheel. Like they have, they have them at Six Flags here with boats. I, my super modified TAO2, it's all aluminum stuff. It had numbered everything. The body was numbered to the chassis. The electronics were numbered to the chassis. So they all had a, a thing like it was used in a some kind of public use situation. It's pretty worn and beaten up too. That chassis was very, 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 very used. But... I don't know if that was really a thing. I remember when I was a kid, all I ever saw them was the uh, like the little NASCAR ones, and they used like bow link chassis, and they had the different NASCAR bodies of the era, and you'd just go pay however many coupons and drive around for about a minute and a half. <laughs> but this one looks pretty good, underside, not a lot of wear, and who knows, I may have replaced some stuff over the years. This looks brand new. Honestly, I'd like to power it on and see, but I don't know, Explorer 2, I don't know exactly what era that is, if that's even remotely LiPo capable. It already has Dean's plugs on it. Um, I don't have any Dean's plugged batteries that aren't LiPo, so I don't want to take the chance and burn it up if it is good. It looks mint. It looks perfect in there, actually. There's not even dust on it or anything, so looks like somebody took pretty good care of it. I think that's a Trinity Speed Gym motor. I don't know if it's Speed Gym 2 or something like that. Um, so I'm sure somebody remembers those from back in the day in the comments. It's got a little bit of dirt on it, but can overall is clean. But it looks like it has seen some use. But otherwise, good complete car. Let me check and see if it's got ball bearings. I'm always curious if people actually ran with bushings. So this one does have ball bearings. That's nice. The last few I've picked up were, were bushing cars. Looks like they're in pretty good shape. There's not a whole lot of slop in them. I'm really surprised how many of these are out there that aren't modified. I mean, that was, even as a child, that's what I loved doing was modifying stuff. And, and my, my original TA02, before it died its glorious death in the 
early 2000s. It was uh, fully loaded. I had all this awesome Japanese stuff. I think it was uh, Coase, K-O-C-E brand. I had all their awesome I had front one way. I had carbon fiber drive shaft. I had, uh, I didn't have universals, but I had all the joints inside and out. And uh, yeah, I, and I've been trying desperately to find some of that stuff and it is impossible. I, I've seen a couple pieces that brand of like upper adjustable upper arms and stuff and they're like $45. And I can only imagine what the full aluminum upper or front one way diff would be <laughs> nowadays. But back in like, I'm gonna say 97 or 98, uh, my sister was living in Mississippi, I think. And she drove all the way over to Nashville and got me back then what was probably $200 worth of Coase hop-up parts for my TA-02. And I tell you, that was one of the best Christmases ever. <laughs> and I had that stuff all the way into the 2000s and I bought my house and I first started this channel and I did a little bit of stuff with it on the channel. I got all my parts out of the junk bin and cleaned them up and built a TA-02 with all the stuff I could find. I mean, I, that was when you could, that was about the end of the time frame you could find the uh, like full GPM kits for TA-02. All the aluminum arms, upper, lower, knuckles, hubs, the whole nine yards. And it was only like a hundred bucks. They were clearing them out. I built an awesome TA-02 and it wasn't, you know, that was the beginning of the channel and I was just getting into the crawling stuff and I was needing money and I sold it. And uh, I regret it because that had all that rare stuff on it that I didn't even know how rare it was back then or how rare it was going to be. But that's how it always goes. And now we're spending the later years trying to chase those dreams. So I think that about wraps it up for this one. Um, again, if you're new here, the Tamiya stuff is just kind of a, you know, it's a childhood hobby. Uh, I've been getting back into these and just gathering up the pieces and parts and the bodies and the things that I can find that are still around because, you know, I feel like I, somebody, it's anything with collectible like that, you, you feel like you're preserving it. Uh, these things, they are going up in value. It's not, you know, like it's super extreme, super rare stuff, but they are getting somewhat collectible as my generation gets older, I guess. But I don't know what to do with this one. It's, it's a shame the stickers are as bad as they are. The body's not that bad. The body, there's a few things. It, I just don't know if this was actually, if you could actually peel all of this off and buff the body and maybe reapply some stickers. This is not a common body because it is so old. I've never seen reproductions of this sticker set. I'm gonna have to do some rearranging. I like to keep my touring cars together. <laughs> Guess we'll put it here for now. Uh, when I built this, I fully intended the cars to all sit in their own little section and then I started unpacking cars and I realized how many I'd, I've actually got and uh yeah it didn't work out luckily fit three wide on there they're not touching and uh, most of them are again driver quality at best some of them are actually really mint but that's very few I think the F-150's perfect brand new body my TA-03F the Cure GTR is perfect uh the calsonic skyline on the end is near perfect. The rest of them all got some bumps and bruises. Some of them are pretty bad. But, uh, yeah, this is my my passion, so we're just going to have fun with it. But until next time, guys, keep it scale. Get out there and do something with the hobby, whether you're bashing X-Maxes or collecting vintage stuff, crawling. It's all fun. Let's get out there and have fun with it. I'll see you all in the next video.